So our final speaker before we announce the top 50 um, is Rob, who's the sales development manager for Amir for Sales Loft. Um, Rob's going to be talking about managing the pressure of sales, which we all know at this time of year is particularly high. Um, talking about pressure in sales and how it's created because of human nature. He's going to be sharing some techniques that he used directly with his team. Um, Rob joined Sales Loft in November 2020, having previously spent time at Yext, Adobe, Salesforce, and Oracle. Um, and Sales Loft are the leading um, sales engagement platform and also our diamond sponsor. So, uh, you, Rob, you're up. James, um, I feel you kind of have to give me a speaking spot since we're the diamond sponsor, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> it's fantastic to be here, guys. It's fantastic to be here in person. The first time I did a sales confidence talk, I was at home on a Zoom. Like every sales person, I had no clue how to work the filter, and everyone could see my spare room. <laughs> After the talk, I got a message from a prospect telling me, really liked your talk. Not going to buy sales loft, but where did you get a bedside locker? <laughs> so hopefully today, I won't be talking about furniture. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you guys about the pressures of sales and how we can cope with it and how I work with my team to do that. Two reasons why I thought that was relevant today is, first of all, we're SDRs. We're put on KPIs all the time. We're put on monthly quotas. And it's also that lovely time of the year of Q4. Woohoo! <laughs> Secondly, if I think about it, mental health. For years in sales, it's been neglected. There's been this level of machoism. You can't make mistakes. You can't be vulnerable. And looking across the room right now, I see so many people who are coming into sales targets for the first time, and it's tough. So today, I wanted to share with you guys um, what I do with my team to help calm down that pressure and relax and get back to that focused state of mind that we want to be in. It's called ABC. I know, creative. <laughs> and I swear it's not ripping off Glen Gary again Ross. Everyone's sick of always be closing. Um, it's a cognitive thinking technique that, and with an acronym of activation, but behavior and consequence. And the reason why it's really important that it helps us understand how we feel, how we think, and how we react. So if we think about activation, it can be anything. But in this context, we're gonna talk about the sales target. This is that untangible conversation we have with our friends who aren't in sales being like, sales is easy. You pick up a phone, you sell a couple of things. We all know that's not the case, and we've all had that question in our minds, how am I gonna hit my target? Now, step one is quite easy, but you really have to commit to step one and not shy away from it. Stay, I've got a target, I've got a timeline, and it's gonna to be tough. Next, it leads us on to belief. Now, there's a really interesting concept called above or below the line, and it defines your natural mindset. If you're above the line, you're creative, you're positive, you see everything as fun. If you're below the line, you're closed off, you're rational, you feel like the world's against you. Unfortunately, our brains are naturally designed to think below the line. This was triggered originally to prevent us from physical threat. But the problem is now, because the way the world has changed, our brain actually can't determine the difference between a physical threat and a threat to something like our ego. And this leads us down into that dark place. If we think about it, we're in this industry that's consistently growing. The targets get bigger, the pressure gets more. And we recently did a study that only 60% of salespeople do that. So combine those aspects when you're naturally pulled down, puts us into a bad place. And that leads us on to the third part, consequence. This is when we are in those tough times. This is when we feel that massive weight on our back and we don't think anyone can help us. So what are we gonna do? Are we gonna say we're doomed? I really hope not. There's a couple of people here from my team that are gonna look at me, put a bit of sweat on their face. <laughs> I think let's challenge it, right? So the, the way you do it is in three stages. First, disrupt. Challenge that belief that you have. Work back up. Unfortunately, you can't go back up to activation. I've had it for 10 years trying to get my target down. The conversation has never gone away, so I'm going to go back down to belief. When I say challenge yourself, really take a bit of your own medicine. Qualify yourself. Understand where is this come from? Why am I going to do that? If you're a manager, my favorite line, and I can see the look right now, is show me the evidence. Show me the evidence that you are not going to hit your target and break it down smaller. This gets us into looking at when we say those questions like, I've got bad accounts, there's too not enough time, Chris is around the corner. No, break it right down. Then we go to reframing. I, assume, I know everyone's gonna hate me for saying this, but everyone's here, control the controllables. 
What happens typically when you're in that sales panic is that you completely forget about everything. You start going to this mindset about not knowing what you are actually in control of as an SDR. A crying example is one of the guys who yesterday booked a meeting in for the 20th of December, and I kind of went, oh, good luck with that one. <laughs> but, um, but what I did turn back to him and say, right, let's understand his business. Let's understand what they're trying to do. And we were able to rebook that meeting for two weeks' time because we were able to rechange the mental state that this person was thinking about what we can do for their business. Finally, it's reinforce. This is something that you can do as an individual. This is what you can do as a colleague. This is what you can do as a manager. Boost them back up. There's a, a sports psychology analysis called the confidence tank. And these are memories that you have from your previous careers, your previous lives that boost you back up. But don't just be, if you look around and you're trying to do this, don't wait on a manager. Don't wait on yourself. Let, help your team be there. Because there was a little bit of fact I saw today, being kind costs absolutely nothing. And in this industry, it's so tough to manage that expectations. So if we do those, disrupt, reframe, and reinforce, we get to this beautiful mindset of a clear state of think, resilience, and we'll be able to hit those targets. Now, guys, all you got to do is practice it, reinforce it, and then go smash your target in Q4.